My name's Anna Owens and I'm the PCS Branch Secretary of Houston and Revenue Customs Branch. Now this morning a delegation of PCS members alongside other trade unionists went along to meet over 200 bombardier workers who've come down to central London to lobby their MP in an attempt to, set, to defend over 1,400 manufacturing jobs in Derby. So we're here today to um, show our support with the Bombardier workers who are trying to defend their plant. Uh, this is a situation where trains that are going to be built on the uh, uh, Thameslink line have been given to Siemens in Germany. This ain't about anti-Germany or anything like this. The railway network in Europe as a whole is growing. There's enough work for all workers across the of Europe. But the reality is that every single train that runs in France is built in France. 97% of the trains that run in Germany are run and built uh, in Germany, and 90% of the trains that run in Spain uh, are built in Spain. And all we're saying is this, is that we're asking the government to take a, a briefing on what they're doing, because they're saying that the, there was hardly any difference in the price, uh, that Siemens was a bit cheaper, but the reality is they haven't taken on board. You're going to put thousands of workers on a dole queue, they're not going to pay income tax anymore. These thousands of workers are going to be claiming uh, social security, but more importantly, these people have got skills to build things and be sitting, vegetating on dole queues. And what we're saying is that these people should use their skills to work, not to sit on the dole. So the Transport for London has uh, rethinked its ideas on its trains uh, that we're going to run on cross -round. and they've put it off for a year to look at all of the permanent uh, situation and what the social consequences are of not being built in Britain. And we're asking the Transport Secretary uh, Philip Hamilton not to sign on the dotted line, to think again, to take the place and have a rethink. And we're saying as far as we're concerned, we don't have to put German workers on the dole queue. I'm sure German workers don't have to put British workers on the dole queue either. There's enough work for all European railway workers and it should be spread around. Now, there have been many economic arguments to defend these jobs, but so far the government isn't listening. And we've just discovered why the government isn't listening. Because according to Vince Cable, the reason that they cannot back down over this contract with Siemens is because it would cause significant damage to this government's reputation. Now, I'm not exactly sure which reputation this government is trying to defend at the moment because in the eyes of millions of public sector workers in this country this government's reputation is dead because what they've done recently is change our contracts in terms of our pensions in terms of our compulsory redundancy scheme and our very status as public sector workers now we've tried to reason with the government we've tried to say to them that if you basically collected the 120 billion worth in taxes that goes missing in this country every single year that you wouldn't need to have one public sector job cut but unfortunately the government was isn't wasn't listening and that's why over 750,000 of us went out on strike on the 30th of June in order to show this government that we're not going to put up with these job cuts. We want to defend our jobs and defend the public sector. Hi, I'm Dave Plummer. I'm the branch organiser at PCS Revenue and Customs Houston branch. Um, Bob Crow mentioned in the interview we filmed at the station that the people currently working for Bombardia are going to end up on the dole queue. Um, now this needs to be seen in context because it's not only people bombarding it, it's people in other private sector jobs and of course it's thousands of public sector workers. Um, what's going to happen to them? Well the way the government's planning, uh, they're going to be told that their benefits are going to be stopped unless they go to work as part of a workfare scheme, which means that they'll be sent along <coughs> to do full-time jobs for companies which can afford to pay full-time wages, except they'll just be getting their benefits. Um, this will have the effect, inevitably, of driving wages down. We've already got Tory MPs standing up in the House of Commons saying that they want minimum wage to be scrapped. We've quite despicably, specifically saying they want it to be scrapped for disabled people, but really they want it to be scrapped for everybody. Um, so you've got that pressure, which fortunately even the Tory government is sensible enough to resist. We've got um, this plan to get people to do, well, to do full-time jobs for their benefits. Um, why would a company choose to employ people on a proper decent wage when they can get people working for free, which is what that will amount to. Um, it's based, I mean, to their credit, I suppose the Tories are trying to promote public sector working. It's just they're promoting public sector working for the payment of a benefit rather than for a payment of a decent wage. Now, why we also wanted to meet with these bombardier workers is not just to act in solidarity with them, 
but also what we want to do in general is unite with private sector workers because within the public sector and the private sector all of us are facing the same attacks and therefore all of us need to fight back in a united fashion and this is why we are now developing a further campaign so we can get more trade unions involved and take further action in the autumn. And also what we're doing is the National Shop Stewards Network, they're going to be lobbying the TUC this Sunday to try and get the TUC, the umbrella organisation of the trade union movement in this country, to launch United Fight Back. But also on the 2nd of October, the Tories are going to be having their annual conference. So Right to Work, which PCS are affiliated to, are organising a demonstration which it's believed over 50,000 people are going to attend.